Hello, welcome to Toffee TV. It is the final word. Me and John are going to try and dis dis dissect Everton's humbling at Stamford Bridge. John, it was well. You were there. I mean, what was the, what was the general atmosphere like during the game, after the game? Um, probably. I don't. Well, I suspect you may be more angry watching it on telly because you're just in shock there. Mm. And of course, uh, in the first half. It was all happening up the other end. Yeah, you know. Um, so you wait, certainly for the Cole Palmer's header. You had to wait and see it on the screen, to see what had happened. Yeah, because it looked sort of no danger, and then the next minute it's in the net type of thing. And then Pickford is right down in front. You know, <laughs> you know straight down the middle. What's he trying to do? Be a Burley goalkeeper or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but generally, um, that nervous amusement that this isn't really happening. You know, <laughs> you know sort of thing. We can't be. Yes, we are this bad. Yeah, and and it was one of those hopefully rare occasions when pretty much no one turned up. Yeah, um, the ones who recognised that they themselves hadn't turned up got all tetchy. Mm. So Tarkovsky behaving out of character. Others like Young were just completely and utterly anonymous. Mm. Um, mm, so. And the manager looking at him because you at least you choose some like you know you. On telly, you, you're waiting for the director to decide what you see, aren't you? But you can look at him, and it, he was gesticulating, not to the players per se, um, but to his own coaching staff in a, what the bleep do we do here? Mm. Um, and then I thought, he just never thought it through as a manager about what he should do at half time. I mean, brought three subs on, but I heard you live at one o'clock or whenever it was, you know, Dan Juma just warms a bench, and I think he's, he's lost the plot. If he ever had it, he's mm. lost the plot. You know? They did show a clip of him, funny enough, of, of I think maybe in the third when, um, where he was just him and the two of the coaches, and he just didn't look like... Yeah. You could, from 100 yards away, you could see that. We don't know, you know. He was just, like, in shock of what had happened. Yeah. But, what I mean, I did a I did a live show yesterday. Um, I did a couple of live shows yesterday, and the, there was a lot of positivity going into this game of... But we did it. If we do... If we <laughs> I mean, do, you talked yeah, about it. Yeah, yeah. But if we, if we go into this game... Like we have been, you know, Chelsea do give goals up. And yet, you know, the the first five minutes or so, or or whatever it was, was just, it was just pure basketball. I mean, obviously, you know, he's, he, he's kept Ashley Young in the team. He's um, he's obviously brought Onana back into the midfield. and But it just, it just felt like pure basketball game. Like, we'll have a go, you'll have a go. And you know if, if you're going to do that against a team that regularly scores, there's only ever going to be one winner. Yeah, t I totally agree. And um, when, when I don't know when I, I tweeted it, but I don't know when it was, but probably after I'd run to the tube station to try and catch one of the last two trains out, out of London, heading north sort of thing. And it was like he'd learnt nothing from the Man United game where mm. we did the same thing. We played the game that they would have wanted us to play. Yeah. And I just didn't get it because it was... It was I don't get it. I think Jack came out with a cracking line earlier on, which is, if you don't do the high press properly, you just play as out of position. <laughs> yeah, And that's a cracking, yeah, you know, yeah. succinctly says says it all. And I don't know what he thought, particularly with Ashley Young in the team, um, why they were doing that. There was no need for it. Surely the right answer was to keep tight, mm -hmm. you know, perhaps a low block, make them work for it, and certainly keep an eye on Cole Palmer, who seems to have free reign to do what he wanted. Um, I just it just looked like a shit show really from no, well, beginning to end it, 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 it definitely was yeah it definitely was a shit show I mean yeah. don't need to mix our words but yeah. it, it was just incredible I mean we had it, it so bad I think you have to forget about it no no that's the it's thing it's one I, of them you just go that's I wasn't, one of those I know. wasn't massively sort of yeah. angry after the game I've been I've been a lot more angry watching Everton after the game or seeing how we've give up a game against someone who maybe mm. we should be beating or last night was a just seemed like a collection of really you know you mentioned it before everyone had an off night the manager completely got it wrong tactically mm. and you have to now just put it put it behind you and, and say well that's done now let's not let it affect the next couple of weeks which it, it, it can't be allowed to to affect those games because they are the most important games. Now, I just found the whole thing so naive and naive from a, a guy who, you know, loves telling us how many games he's been in football for and how many years he's been managing for. 
I think that's about that naivety to say, we're going to go to these. I've seen that people can score goals against. I've seen Bailey score. I've seen Sheffield United score. And go, and go, we can do that. We can get under their skin. The game's not won in the first five minutes. No. And at Goodison, don't get me wrong, that's what I want to see. I want to see is go after teams at Goodison. Because you know, there's an you know there's an effect. You know the effect it has on the crowd. But playing a basketball game with a team that scores goals when you don't score goals with individual talent that trumps ours, yeah, right, is, right, is incredible. Right across the board, and the, the, there's a real contradiction in sitting off Burnley at home mm. and going at Chelsea away. Yeah, I don't get that. Yeah, I, I just don't... don't get it at all. You and you know, and <laughs> it just went wrong from the start well he said after Bailey designed an ugly win or whatever it was yeah. like why couldn't you design an ugly way of winning for last night or an ugly way of get like, dragging a point out which is what you've been doing it's what's been effective you know when we went to Newcastle with a goal behind if we played as open as we were last night Newcastle would have been oh, four or five they'd have done up. the same yeah but we didn't we stayed yeah. in the game and we mm. grabbed the point I just don't get that from last night and of course you know I heard him again and he said well, we nearly scored. We nearly scored in the first five minutes. We had the first big chance. Great. Good little move. Good run by Coleman. Good ball into the box. Got his head up, seen Beto. And Beto is put it over the bar. Now, whether he's offside or he's not, we don't know. Because if he'd put it in but the back of the net... stats, there's half our XG right there. Yeah. And you, you can't... I mean, clearly, what I've not seen, not heard of what he said. I was travelling. It's old news now. But I'll ask you. Was he just putting it on the players, was he? Um... Did it? Yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah he was. He was. He was. He's done that a couple of times recently. He's put it on the players, yeah. right? And, and and I think it go. Yeah, me and Baz have had this conversation many, many times about when you start getting nervous, right? And my pre-match starts mm. when I see the team. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I I didn't get it myself. A couple of good guys from uh, Newport who travelled for three or four hours on a coach. We're going to rush away afterwards. Another three or four hours back to Newport, right? And they read the team out. Mm. And the reaction from the guy reading it out was literally, bloody Ashley Young starting again. Mm. And you think, and it does, it makes you sing because I, I have no idea. Listen, if there's people out there who think he's doing a good job. And in some games, when he's not put under any obligation, if you like, then he's okay. But he was completely lost again last night. And you can't play a man down, right? You can if you're Burnley and you're playing Everton, yeah. right? But you can't play a man down who's actually on the pitch because that's worse than being down to 10. Mm. Someone who's on the pitch because you expect things and not. And I, and I think there was no protection afforded the back four at all yeah. by whoever was in and around midfield. Yeah. You know, there were times when Garner and bloody Dwight McNeil were in about two yards of each other, you know? Mm. You think, well, back to Jack's phrase, isn't it? If you're over there, Jack... Sorry, um, if, if you're over there... You know, Garner or James, not Jack, but James or Dwight, who's where you should be? Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and James, you're supposed to be in the middle. You know, okay, you do go out, you know. But mm. anyway, it was all very frustrating uh, and it got quickly comical in the sense of, particularly when, you know, the goalkeeper says, there you go, just chip me from whatever it was, 30 you, yards. No, were you like, though, because you mentioned like the midfield, the midfield. We're running around like lunatics, and that's not what their job. We've obviously, we've spoke loads of times on the channel about Onana and James. He's got to be a screen. He's yeah. got to be. Onana's got to be a screen, but also yeah. James Garner does that quite a lot as well. He sits yeah. and playing a similar position. Um, they're not two for the same team. You know, they yeah, exactly. But so last night, you've got two. You're just thinking a little bit like we did when we went to Brighton when it was a dish of Garner gay, and I think Garner that day, they just sat in front of the back four and didn't let anything pass through them. And last night, James Garner and Onana were just all over the place and were going past the ball. So certainly when they scored the first goal, Cole Palmer's got, he's got Brantwaite. He does them big time. And it's like, that should be Garner or Onana where, where mm. you're getting through. And that's why um, Brantwaite has been exposed quite a lot last night. Mm. Probably had his worst game. Mm. But it's cause and effect, yeah. you know? And, and of course, that turns into overstretching and all those sorts of things. It was cold, by the way, right? You know, and, and then he ends up getting himself a bit of a pull. You know, and that, mm. again, you could get into a situation where he, he doesn't play for a couple of games. And then we've got Michael Keane and all the connotations that brings. But um, lots of fans bailed, you know, obviously in the first half. Didn't go far, just went in the back and drank beer. Mm. Um, you know, Chelsea happily 
had people beer throughout and, uh, and, kept, and kept the TV screens on, <laughs> you know, so you were at home watching it on the telly and quite a few people yeah, were yeah. in Stamford Bridge watching it on the yeah. telly. Um, but uh, I can't decide. Listen, I'm an advocate. Once it crossed the line, it's always on the players. But they don't look like a group who believes in what the manager's saying. No, it felt like that, to be honest. It felt you like know. after the first, the first one from a Chelsea point of view is a really good goal. Cole Palmer does Brantwaite, gets away. His calmness yeah. in not thrashing at it. And well, he's a, you can see he was brought up by oh, Manchester City. Feel, yeah. Great finish. But then there's no reaction. There's no, there's no reaction to it. The second goal is we allow a player to get out of a corner. And then they just work the ball, work the ball, get it in the box. Keeper could have done better. And yeah, I don't know if he could have, Ivan. I don't know where he where he could have pushed it. But down. <laughs> yeah, maybe then he put say he puts it down and someone taps well, it. Yeah, it's the same argument. You're damned if you do, and damned if you don't. Cole Palmer reacts in the next minute it's in the back of the net, and then Pickford for the third goal. It's it's really really stupid. Oh, totally. Really stupid. Again, nine times out of ten, that's a simple thing for him. But last night he gets caught and Cole mm. Palmer. At first, I didn't think it was going in, and then it's just looped into the goal. Yeah. And it just looks like the worst thing. But again, it's just a reaction. There is no reaction. No. The manager is looking at the manager is with his coaches and he's looking at the players. And the players are almost looking back to him, going, What do you want us to do here? And that that to me last night like we just said, last night's not a typical away performance. And I think you look, we've had three or four of them this season. But you look at the players and think we need guidance here because the thing you're asking us to do, which is alien, do we continue doing that or do we go back? To what we normally do. So, so sorry, interrupting, like, but on telly you see more of the players up close. Mm. Is that a fair view? What you're saying that they looked like they're asking, "What do you want us to do?" I don't think. I don't think the f asking is in. No, no. I, I, they I mean, looked, they, that's what I mean. The reason I ask yeah. is because that means what's happening is they're doing as they're told, mm. and they're then questioning mid-game about whether they should continue to do it or not. Well, there has and been we, a, we clearly changed a little bit in the second There has half. been a question mark over whether the players stuck to the plan. And I often think whether if players don't stick to plans, it's because they don't believe in the plans. And you can say that in good mm. and bad. We've had situations previously where where we've played a certain type of football and it hasn't been good. The manager comes in and he wants to change it and the players don't believe in it. They don't believe whether they're good enough or whatever. The way we or play, physically can't do yeah, it. Yeah, we play a basic style which suits suits us because it helps us keep the ball out of the back of the net which is what we should have been trying to do last night mm. and I just wonder whether the players looked and thought no that thing that we don't really want to do we're 3-0 down because of it whereas we're quite comfortable doing what we normally do even though it's not great and it's not progressive we can play that because it's been drilled into us every day I just find the idea that you go to somewhere like Stamford Bridge and change the style to be absolutely crazy and on the manager. And the mm. players aren't going to change players. Players don't. Players do what they're told. They don't go they don't go away from it. And when they do, they get dropped. That is the re that's real. We've that's had them on this sofa saying even yeah. if they know it's wrong, they still do it. Of yeah. course, even when players say sorry, when managers get sacked and a new manager comes in and people go, Why is he doing it for them? It's because they're doing it differently. Mm. They're not doing anything different, as in going to work every day, but the way they're being asked to they play. more. Yeah. Well, he, the way they're being asked to play is, is just a better mm. way of playing. So, I mean, being three down that quickly and then obviously just before our time, I, Jackson's goal, which is, again, it's, embar it's embarrassing for Tarkowski because he's just, he's 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 looking around. Um, the lad just pulls away from him. He gets a turn and scores. And it's, an embarrass it's embarrassing he's allowed to cross it and he's allowed to turn in the way he does. And you know the game's over and then it's, can you stop the rot can you will there be massive changes will there be some kind of massive reaction we come out at half time we've made three ch changes the game changes slightly because suddenly then you know we get on the ball a little bit because they're 4-0 up they don't care they oh, they dropped off 20% yeah. yeah game management they got yeah. a semi-final at the weekend exactly right exactly right game management so, and, but we still but other than Gomez having a bit of possession a bit more possession and looking a bit more lively we didn't do a tap. No, we, we didn't, didn't do anything. No. It was in, it was absolutely shambolic again. Mm -hmm. And and watching them just trying to play simple passes to each other was just was just oh, nauseating to watch it. To be honest, tell me about it. <laughs> well, you're there, yeah. 
you didn't laugh, you'd cry. Mm. I mean, their XG went from um, first half, it was 1.59, so it went to 1.49 second half. Ours was 1.2 in the first half. It went to 0.26 in the second mm. half. So we didn't do anything. We didn't create anything. We didn't all pull together. The first half XG will both be better, probably. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and obviously better had the goal. It, but if you look at their, their, their XG, I mean, penalty... A Palmer scored as 0.76 mm. or something on its own. Yeah. So they just pulled stumps and said, yeah. you know, this lot will give us a couple of goals probably just by making mistakes. Mm. Um, and that's sort of what happened, isn't it, really? Mm. So, um, But yeah, I mean, embarrassing is the right word, but I think you just have to take it as an anomaly. Um, the curiosity for me is if you, if you want you can choose what you like, you know. If you're pro Deitch and you said the players let him down, or if you're anti Deitch and you say he got the tactics wrong mm. and the players didn't like it, and so ultimately they're all to blame, yeah, yeah. right? Bec whatever. But it was clear to me anyway that something that got us caught twice at Man United, which is fundamentally high pressing and not doing it very well, yeah. yeah? Um, he chose that to be the technique to go out to and, and play Chelsea, who've got a lot of really talented but they're mm. not a very good team per se right yeah but they've got some talent to burn there they really have yeah and we your phrase around basketball is an interesting one because you know often you don't get space in basketball but on a big football pitch yeah. a team with technically good ta good good skills and pace and you see what happens mm. and you know this thing about let's go there they're vulnerable they haven't lost for nine weeks no i know in the league but by the same token, I can't remember what the stat is. I think, again, you alluded to it on uh, on the live. They've conceded at least two goals in the last six or seven games yeah. or something. And we should have scored two goals. Mm. You know, if the striker can get on the end of a, a firmly hit cross, bang, you mm. know, and that makes a big difference. Yeah, you well, know, that's that. it, isn't it? And then, of course, if he's, and we are getting caught offside too easily, mm. particularly in the last couple of games. We're easy to play the offside on, you know, and... And Decorey, he might be fundamental to the system, but no one is playing so crap. Mm. Yeah. And he's so far off. Don't know how much Ramadan's impacted. Does he have to get his energy back? But you're right. Uh, it you know, might not matter, matter in a week's time because no. one way or another, it's all going to happen in this next week, yeah. isn't it? Well, it's uh, ultimately, it's just from, I mean, quality. You can see the quality difference. I mean, oh, yeah. we talked about Chelsea. People talk about Chelsea and people are saying, well, it's starting to come together now. You know, you can see that Cole Palmer's their main man, and I think the penalty thing was a was a big thing last oh, night for hilarious. them. You know, them right in front of us, yeah. Them arguing over the ball, and and then finally, like Conor Gallagher coming on. No, he's he, you know those things. They're working them out. They are. They're a younger collection, young collection of players who are. I mean, they're starting eleven with sub twenty five average age. Yeah. Also was over twenty eight. Yeah. yeah. So they've got a lot fair number of. They've got good. They've there. got good players, and and it was bound to happen that they come together and put a performance in and on the flip side of that with some of the performances we've had that was bound to happen it was it, it felt like at some point someone was going to do that to us i mean it doesn't always feel like that consciously but just some games where i think you're right and many of us might have expected that would have happened at newcastle mm -hmm. because of the way that stadium is and the fantastic fans they've got and all this sort of stuff but i think I don't know whether this is, I don't know what the general consensus is, but I think last night was more about how crap we were mm. rather than how good Chelsea were. You take Cole Palmer out of that starting 11 and that's a completely different game. Mm. And that man is, I mean, how City can think, yeah, we don't need this guy. Maybe because he's got a guy called Foden, yeah. yeah. Um, but it just shows you how they can grow players. Uh, you know, what's that? How many goals has he scored now? 25 20 odd, yeah. In, in, in all competitions. And not many score four in a game. No, you know, um, and he just strolled around the place. Yeah, every time he got the ball, he had space. You know, and he, it's funny because he doesn't have blinding pace. Mm. In fact, he doesn't have much pace at all. I don't think I've yeah. not seen him. Or well, he certainly doesn't have to use it if yeah, he has yeah. got it. Um, but he's just got an innate talent to see a gap, mm. and if that gap's between him and the back of a net, he puts the ball in it. He's just a he's a quality player, and obviously Pure quality. Chelsea have got quality players and have paid a lot of money for. They've them. also got some. Bog average players yeah, paid you a lot of money for. I just think that it's not that when we're talking about it was, it was bound to happen. It's because if you don't ha if you don't have a threat in your team, then teams are just going to go just keep. Yeah, but your defensive structure 
because and you you opened up this with it, which was you 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 have a method of defending and how you play. Yeah. And it, I mean, it's miserable and boring, but it keeps you tight mm -hmm. and all that sort of stuff. But that shouldn't fall apart, you know. When all about you are losing their heads, you mm -hmm. know, blah blah blah. If you're in the difficult circumstances in business, fall back mm -hmm. on process. We don't have a fallback to a routine. It, yeah. it, and, and that's got to be a lack of belief. I, I can't think of another reason why a reasonably tight knit back four who have demonstrated, notwithstanding the challenges we've had all season, that defensively by numerics, mm -hmm. we were fourth best, right? In the sense of yeah, fourth yeah. lowest conceding of goals, suddenly to fall apart. Mm -hmm. And for you know, very experienced, been there, backs to the wall type professionals like Tarkovsky to lose it and get all petulant and. I'm just going to bang into players because I can't get near you anyway. So I'll take a book in. So he's one booking away from a suspension. But that was right? a worrying. That was a worrying trait last night, wasn't it? You're absolutely right. If you can't, if you can't, that philosophy discipline broke down. But the right, philosophy yeah. Dyche all the way has been: if you can't score goals, then at least don't concede them. Make the game tight. Yeah. And we've seen that. We've seen while that can work when we went to Newcastle, yeah, Brighton, when it was a bit you know flipped down the other way, conceding a last minute goal, but. When they went down to ten men, you know, going one nil up against Burnley and being even against Burnley, it was no, we're not going to be, we're just going to play on the counter attack here. Yeah, and as you said before, to see that last night and almost play completely opposite to what we normally do and go, we're going to dispense with defending tonight, lads. We're going to do everything we can to score, even though we're not very good at it. it was so strange, and then that to lead into petulance from an experienced player like Tarkowski. Was was worrying as well because he he should know better as you said he's picked up his ninth ninth booking for absolutely nothing something in the opposition half you know it, it's that lack of discipline is also very very worrying the managers dragged off a couple of players as well and and said harsh things about them and you just think as he yeah well he said you know he said they just weren't up to it and 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 you know. That kind of thing, and he doesn't like an honour anyway. But just drag, just by the very nature of dragging them off, he's showing everybody, isn't he? When he's had plenty of opportunities to drag people off this season and hasn't hasn't done it, yeah. you know, he doesn't drag his favourites off. He doesn't drag other people off when when they are absolutely terrible. Well, I was tweeting it about the players who were warming up and stuff. So clearly, he was going to make changes and stuff. And then you can see them all stripping off, but they're far away. And unless they turn around, you see the number you don't know where it is. And then you see Ashley Young trotting onto the pitch, and you yeah. think. Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah. whoever it is, we can, we know three are getting hooked, but it's not him. Mm. And he was completely anonymous. But then I've got a downer on him, so we. No, he was. He was. He was terrible last. Yeah. Like he was literally, literally. Not, did, as, a, not as a person. But... He literally did absolutely nothing last yeah. night, Ashley Young. And I know you could. Other people did something, and it mightn't have been great. He did nothing. That's he was right. ap He did absolutely Particularly nothing. Particularly in the first half, completely nothing. He didn't anonymous. add anything. Yeah. He did. He was just. He was just a. He wasn't even there. He was somewhere it was like else. Playing with, it's like playing with ten men. It he was, was it somewhere was, else. <laughs> and when you've got him and, and obviously Seamus Coleman playing on the right, on the same side, again that you've got to question, you've got to look at it and think. You're playing a team with loads of energy, loads of pace because they did. It was the pace that done us fit. They're yeah. just simply running through us with their pace, and you've decided to pick two players. You know, <laughs> with the you know you add their ages together, it's in the seventies. I mean, that is again something where you think. What are you doing? Both of them are younger than you, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, but in, in football teams, <laughs> no, know, that's not real. Just two um, ages of. Yeah. yeah, no, but in, but the that's that's again that's a crazy thing to look at and think. Yeah. We're going up against the team. We've got loads of energy, loads of pace. Let's put two players in their mid to late thirties on our right hand side in a Premier League game. And frankly, in the last couple of games or well, last three games, Seamus Coleman looks. Like he's ready to hang his boots up. If, if Seamus will know. If if you if I'm honest, he's looked, he's looked really Bournemouth, you know, poor, and he's he's just looked. He hasn't looked great in the last. And I know he let me picked up an injury, and that's why he went off for half time last night. But to have someone in front of him protecting him, that's a slap in the face for not necessarily Jack Harrison as such, because Jack Harrison hasn't been amazing this season. But certainly Nathan Patterson, again, slap in the face for him. You know, whether what you think about him, to say, well, you can play right back and maybe Ashley Young can play I mean, right midfield. You, you talk about man management, don't you, in, in mm -hmm. industries generally, but football. And the manager's got himself into this getting battered at half-time thing. And he's got this young lad, youngish lad, who he's probably severely damaged his, his mm -hmm. confidence and stuff like that. 
and he's got the guy, the go-to guy in Ben, Ben Godfrey, mm. who he, he would start with ahead of this guy. Yeah. And he doesn't put Ben on, he puts the kid on. Yeah. Who tries really hard, looks rusty as hell, and then mm. does himself, right? Yeah, it's just... Yeah. It's hard to equate, isn't it? Why you would start Ben Godfrey in other games and then bring... Patterson on last night, well, it's because you're 4 0 down. I appreciate yeah. that. And Patterson was all right when he came on, he was rusty, but he's on an injury now, which, if it's if it's a bad one, could cost them his place in the Euros. Yeah. If it's a bad one, and if it's not a bad one, he certainly won't get much game time That's right. between now and the Euros. And again, when you talk man management, it's dead easy to pick. Old experienced players who've been there and know then all you have to do is just give them a little word in their ear. It's different when you've got to have young players and you've got to cultivate them and get their arm around them and actually work with them to improve them as a player. And I think that's another thing where Dice has completely let people down this season. Again, when you look at the subs, you know, I'm surprised he did bring passes in on, but maybe he looked at it as a more 4 0 down. I've got, well, I've got to bring an attacker on at least, just even if it looks good. But when you look, like you mentioned it then, not bringing Dan Juma on at some point, you know. He must have thought, whoa. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> but but people like Chimiti, who's basically been... Was it two minutes from the end? But he's wasted, his, he's wasted his, his entire... This should have been a season where, where season. he developed. Dobbin, this should have been a season where he yeah, developed. Yeah. And I know Dobbin's injured at the moment. But these players have been completely wasted to the point where now that we need them, now that we're in the... They're not, set, nowhere near ready. They're nowhere near ready. But the PSR... Um, Appeal will be next week, won't it? No, no, no. Forest next week, ours yeah. the week after, whatever. And you've got Kevin, Kevin Thelwell doing his bit when he was a witness in, in the IC itself talking about the, the new recruitment strategy, which mm. is fundamentally, it's real rocket science people, so you should read it. You'll learn lots, buy players young, develop them and sell them for lots of money. Yeah. That's the strategy. But you go to any young player in any league, I don't care what league they're in, and they go, who's going to do the developing of me then? Mm. And they go, ah, we got this guy here, look. 400 games in the Premier League, he'll develop you. And then they'll go, how's Mr. Patterson getting on? Yeah. How's Mr. Chimitty getting on? How's Mr. Dobbin getting on? Oh, no, they warm our bench, right? And I'm being really cynical now and mischievous, I suppose, but mm. these things are all joined together. Yeah. You can't have a goddamn strategy that mm. says, buy young, underdeveloped players who you think have got a high, higher ceiling, which at worst you can sell on at a profit, at best they drop into your team and make a difference, and then appoint a manager who's not interested. Yeah. And that's not just this manager, maybe the next manager, and so on. Mm. You've, it's got to be a joined up strategy, yeah, and it yeah. doesn't look joined up at all. No, because it... if Kel Th Kev Thelwell takes credit for the recruitment strategy, mm. who recruited the manager? because they're at odds, yeah. and that's not anti-dice that bit. No. This is potentially the right man for the right problem, which is backs to the wall, you know, finish 17th. Mm. But you're recruiting players for a different yeah. world, you know, at, at a time when you need well, every, you yeah. know, talents on the pitch. Everything's at odds with each other, isn't totally. it? Totally. Everything's at odds with each other, and, you know, and of course he has got young players on the pitch. He's got James Garner, who's yeah, took yeah. off at half-time. He's got, he's got Dwight McNeil, who I think we often feel like. I think Dwight McNeil, you look at Dwight... This no, day and age, 23, 24 is not young. No, no, what I'm saying... I'm old school, Pom. Yeah, no, no, Dwight McNeil... <laughs> Dwight, Dwight McNeil's yeah. got, got lots of Premier League games under his belt. and He's still relatively young. And he's yeah. still, but he's still he's relatively young. now, but that's all he is, and he's 24, 25. I don't even think he's that old. I mean, he's that old. But yeah, it's certainly over 23 or it's, older. Yeah. And, they, and they do play, but they don't look like they've developed. I no. mean... Uh, James Garner, I've said this loads of times, and I'm not being disrespectful to. He'll never play for a club bigger than Everton. He'll never, they'll never. Well, he be has any, done now, hasn't he? Yeah, he'll never play for anyone bigger than Everton if he leaves. Them. Yeah. He's, he's, he, he could be at Everton for years. And yeah. Dwight McNeil will never play for a club bigger than Everton. I'm convinced of it. I, well, I should never manage a bigger club. No, I know, but that's the thing that's you watch these players and. I'm often told, people suggest to me how good these players are and they're just not good. They're not good players. I'm, I'm, I'm often told about, you know... Depends I'm, on the environment, right? No, but the, go on. No, it just depends on the environment. Mm. Every single Premier League footballer, anyone who gets to start a Premier League game is a good footballer. Yeah, of course, but 
that's how you just said they're not good. No, we don't. You don't look. You don't look at them as in the through the eyes of what, what a level of football. No, I think. Yeah. Okay. If you say very simplistically, because you mentioned those two players, are they are they average, above average, or lower than average players in the Premier League in the position they play? In your view, below average. Right. Okay, so so that means you've got a bo below average guys who are starting every single, mm. pretty much starting every game, yeah, yeah. right? Um, and if you do it based on how they are now, where would you put an honour? Average, above average, below average in the role that he plays? For us, he's he's um, he's average. Okay, so average. Branthwaite above, average or below in um, the role that he plays? He's above average. Right. So we've got a mixture. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's what happens in squads, yeah, yeah. isn't it? Right. Is the manager getting the most out of the squad? Mm, no. Well, there you go on the manager then. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you're if you're a fan of Sean Dyche, just ask you. You don't have to publicise. You don't put it on Twitter or anything. <laughs> just say to yourself, yeah. "Do I think he's getting the most out of this group of players? Forget how good they are. Mm. They can all be shit, right? They can all be superstars. The managers are referenced, you know, are measured the same way. Mm. Are you getting the most that can be got out of this group?" Mm. And if you think he's getting the most out of this group, then I'll, I'll disagree with you, mm. right? But that's all we should hold Dyche's feet to the fire yeah, for, yeah, yeah. right? Are you getting the most out of this group of players, yes or no? This group of players, if it can win three or four games on the trot, it can't then be allowed to go 13 without winning again. Therefore, something's wrong. Mm. If we had leadership, which is what you would say, and this is where excuse hits reason, right? If we had leadership, then something will be done about it. Mm. Now, if Kevin Thelwell, as the director of football, doesn't think he can do his job because the chief executive isn't telling him what to do, then that's a lack of leadership, Yeah. right? If Sean can't go to Kevin and send stuff the other way, that's a lack of leadership. If the two assistants can't get through to the manager, that maybe we need to do different things. That's a lack of leadership, right? And ultimately, the whole place lacks leadership. Mm. So hello, let's not be surprised when sometimes it becomes blindingly obvious on a football field what a mess we're in. Mm. You can kid some of the people some of the time and all that sort of crap. But it's a complete anomaly. Anomaly. Yeah. This is not a group of players, I'm going to look stupid now, but this is not a group of players who are going to lose that badly more than once or twice a season. Mm. Right? A, because they're not going to play someone who's... Yeah right in the moment to, to destroy them you can play that badly and win can't you yeah let's yeah. be honest um so they have to get it and, and i think that's how the manager when he does his pre-match he, yeah. he didn't do it last night did he for the weekend so when he does his pre-match you'll set an anomaly it's behind us mm. now now that's great for publicity or public consumption yeah but if the players don't believe that yeah then they'll roll up on sunday and they'll, they'll have the same mindset yeah i mean that's it isn't it and again it's interesting I, how would you play against Forest? Would you go at them? Mm. Would you sit off them? Would you have a balanced view if you're playing FM24? You know, <laughs> you know, and, and that's why you know you've got three or four hundred games, Sean. It's yeah. up to you to come up with it. But you're going to be measured about the outcome, and the outcome at the weekend cannot possibly be a defeat. End off. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, that's it, isn't it? It's, it's it, you know, you you're right. You put it, you put last night behind it. It was a, it was a, it was a full. Um, mixture of of reasons and of course they've gone on and got a penalty which at first i have no idea that was a penalty until they decided it was for the one the uh, previous one the previous the one, one over to the left well as i was yeah. on the pitch over there, that was a stone wall the one he appeared to give it for yeah. it wasn't a penalty yeah. at all um, in live thingy watching it yeah and, and then it was only in front of and us, then so. they've got the they've got the six and obviously not only they got the six but patterson the kid who does it <laughs> kid does it oh he's so happy patterson <laughs> gets injured in the process yeah which has added another uh, another issue because obviously it's no uh, issue at all because the man hasn't been played. Well, Shame, yeah, but Seamus <laughs> Seamus has gone off with an injury, so it means Ben Godfrey's going to probably end up playing right back for the rest of the season. Um, Scary. And you factor in Jared Brantwaite going off and Michael Keane coming on and um, not not given opportunities. Dominic Carvalhoon, we've got no idea. Hopefully, it can be managed and hopefully he'll be back for Saturday, Sunday because we're going to need him because. You know, Beto is absolutely not up to. What was it with Gay? He he had a, a hamstring, or he felt a hamstring, or something like so that. He had the family thing, followed by. Him. Yeah, yeah, chasing after kids, probably. But <laughs> so I mean, all that mixed together, it just it was just an absolutely 
horrendous night and that it, it, Dyche, it, Dyche has gone very undyche for the game and that's what's made it even worse. Do you worse. think, because this did, because Billy no mates, because I went there and back on my Todd's, so I'm on the train and just musings and stuff. Do you think there's any semblance of the managers being cautious with Gay and with DCL, right? Mm. Um, Pre-match. And he's thought, we're probably going to lose this anyway. Mm. Let's go for it and see what happens. Maybe he did. Maybe he did. And, and maybe he thought, even if we went for it, it wouldn't be that bad. No, because I think... He was, can't have foreseen I think there was an air of... hammering. Yeah, and I think there was an air of before the game, uh, cautious optimism, because... There was, there was. The weekend had already finished. We already knew what the other teams were doing. Mm. If we went there and had a go, and it could have been a bit like Spurs, maybe, where it's a it's a defeat where you play well, mm. or you, you grab something out of the game and it's been a great, great weekend. I think the fact that the way we've been beaten and, of course, the goal difference now, we've got the same as Forrest. Mm. So that's really bad. That, that, yeah. that turned out to be a really bad weekend. It's done, obviously, more, more hard, obviously losing 6-0, but I think if you'd gone there and lost 2-0 and had, a decent, had an all right game and everyone's come off the pitch, you go, right, that's not the one we were looking to win. We were looking to win against Forrest, against Brentford, um, Sheffield United and, and make sure we don't lose a Luton mm. they're the ones it's just the it's more the embarrassment of it being on Monday night football it's a hammering a player gets four goals chips the goalie from 30, you know 25 yards because he's not because the goalie's him, mistake because he passes to him all those things you know Cole Palmer getting a perfect hat trick is going to oh look, was it yeah it was left, yeah left so that's right? gonna that sort of thing is gonna it's gonna last longer in the memory, it'll be brought up more often. Cole Palmer's goal. So Should... that lovely slotted goal in the first Left half foot. was with his wrong foot. Mm, I don't know. He's a very talented player. I don't know if he's got a wrong foot. Yeah, true. So, well, if you most say... footballers are supposed to have two feet. Well, Pickford does, but we know he's a left footer, so maybe... yeah. But Pickford's Pickford's right foot is still better than oh yeah. Um, no, I don't dispute some that. of our players. Don't dispute that. But right you, feet. You, even if you can do both, you favour one. So yeah, unless yeah. Palmer swaps. Which penalty? Which foot he takes? Mm. Now, how cool would that would be? Yeah, walking yeah. up to a keeper and he doesn't even know which foot you're yeah, going to use. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's his next trick. Maybe <laughs> that's his next trick to embarrass the keeper yeah. and the rest of his team. But, but uh, yeah, I mean, the manager for me has real issues, um, and, and I think I've sat here. I'm not sure it was with you or with Baz Yonks ago at one of the away games, and it was it was clear that the the two coaches were trying to get him to do stuff, and he mm. was saying no. Yeah, you know, um, so. Who knows? Who knows? They've got a little bit longer to try and get their heads around it. They'll have today off, presumably, because of course players have to have days off after they've worked a day. It's a shift system, one yeah. on, one off, one on, one off. Well, they might be in there today doing recovery and stuff. Well, the ones who are injured will be, won't they? So. I don't really question that kind of thing. It's, it, no, I mean, it is what it is. They've got to recover. No, it is absolutely. what it is. But what I mean, just, just I mean, the play, what we've got is what we've got. I mean, you know, you, you talk about plays, we've talked about before. People talk about Jack Harrison and then actually even plays and then it's I want Jack Harrison back. You know, it's we've got Dwight McNeil on the left hand side. He's, he does he, he does nothing in my eyes. He does absolutely nothing. Um, he's not a footballer. I think everyone knows he's not a footballer. I would have ever gone touched with a barge pole. Um, but he still does more hard work than a lot of the players who would say that. But doesn't he, he can't come? It's for he can't come out the team. Can't I mean maybe you look at Dan Juma now, but that's. That really is the problem, isn't it? What we can't do on Sunday is changes for changes. So. No, no, that, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's There's really... a reason why he's not been playing certain players. He can't suddenly pop up and say, I'm going to play them now. Yeah. You know, he can't do an exaggerated version of putting Patterson on a half time. Yeah. You know, almost to go, see, I made changes and we still lost. But, you know, it's. But this is the problem, isn't it? We are. And he's from Nottingham. He lives in Nottingham, so maybe. <laughs> but we are where we are ground. because the manager ground the team down in the first half of the season to get the points and to be fair to the manager he's got the points the points are there but then some of them have been taken off us mm. we have two, we've had two different realities this season we've had the one we were in and the one we're in now and he's not reacted to the one we're in now or the one we're in now the players are so gone in terms of physically because of the squad's so small that, you know what? The, that the other players that he had that he had to develop during the season so that for the back half of the season they were available. He hasn't done that. So we are, we're stuck, aren't we? We're in a, we're in I think a limbo. There's a huge amount of overthinking there, right? No, I don't think there is. Because it's a season's work, John. No, I understand, yeah. 
and you know and the man has built a career on you know 1.2 points a game mm. over 38 games you get out the other end there you go we didn't get relegated mm. fantastic right um but professional footballers shouldn't be shot right mm. um now whether if you're trying to tell me that they expended huge amounts of energy you know getting four five or six points in 13 games because mm. ultimately and the buzz was here i guess you keep coming back to almost half a season yeah of getting nowhere getting nothing you know and and if you take that manager's career average into account mm. we should have 10 more points yeah we'd be sorted already mm. right so sadly the wheels fallen off in quotes right it's happened it's been and gone mm. and now he's, he and the squad and us and everyone else have got to deal with the consequences yeah. and, and and there's still a glimmer of hope that there's yeah, actually course. clubs worse than us in this <laughs> right um, but we keep giving them a uh, uh, room for optimism mm. if you're looting you think yeah. you know you can either think we've got to play these guys ha 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 yeah. or you think didn't see that coming mm. bit more effort you know keep the pressure on them they'll flake they've been to the well twice in consecutive seasons the old circle mm. of the drain story yeah. you know and this is to be the time that they don't get out you know um so let's time the uplift in whatever yeah. uplift we need yeah to be most damaging and beaten forest would make a huge difference it'll give you some of your goal mm. difference back yeah because whatever it is it will be double whammy for forest and um you know just make Luton run out of games ultimately well that's it isn't it ultimately no you're right ultimately the games we've got left if we can't muster enough points then we deserve to go down mm. anyway you know regardless of if you can't beat if you can't beat some of the your, your competitors from the teams around you then you don't you don't deserve to be in the premier league no in a normal um if there's such a thing with Everton but in a normal series where we're at this stage of the season and you're playing at home the teams you need to beat because they're the ones around you down there you'd revel in it mm. well we've got Sheffield at home bring it on we've got Forest at home yeah. we've already done them at their gaff yeah. right we've got Brentford tidy team but we mm. can turn them over we've done it before we can do it again there you go optimism three games nine points job done but it's not mm. that easy, is no. it? No, and the time of this defeat. And we couldn't get Liverpool at a better time. Mm. They couldn't get us at a better time yeah, either yeah. to re-energise their confidence after mm. a few poor performances. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what it's all about. Yeah, yeah. But you've got to, they've got to go on the pitch, these footballers of ours, confident in the tactics and the strategy, mm. it's a bit heavy to call it strategy, the tactics that the managers said we're going to employ. And if he doesn't ask them, particularly as close ones, be as captain or whatever, yeah. right? Are we cool with this, guys? Mm. Do we believe in this? Right, because we have to believe. Just watch Pep. Yeah. He, he doesn't use the words, but he's <laughs> constantly asking his players, do they believe? Do yeah. they believe? And he tells them what to believe. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, I'll rock up at the weekend. My uncle will be over from Canada. He's coming to see the old lady before it gets pulled down. They just need to win for Uncle Billy. It's as simple as that. They need to win for a lot of uncles. Yeah. <laughs> and Sunday, it's just a case of winning a game, isn't it? It's no, up it to is. the manager to yeah. do energise them this week. But I don't want to hear afterwards, whatever the outcome is, some bullshit about mm. we were ugly, or, yeah. you know, or whatever, or we decided to yeah. be expansive today, right? Just go out and do what you've done yeah. all season to a degree, which is be hard to beat good at set pieces where Forrest are not yeah recognize who their players are you don't want to be on the ball too much certainly in the last third mm. and you know have your attention switched on yeah no absolutely absolutely you know sounds um, easy doesn't it <laughs> well some people make it look really really hard but yeah. some of people who make it really look really really hard let's have a look at Beto's numbers from last night obviously he did put the ball in the back of the net um and obviously he put one over um as you can see there, a little bit of red in the in the box, not much else. Yeah. Um shots on target two. Where are you with better? I'll I'll tell you now, Miss Chances one, XG of one point three one. Uh accurate does the accurate passes two out of five. Yeah. <laughs> and uh duels one per game. Three out of six. Three out of six. Yeah. Um yeah. Beto is 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 the poster child for Everton. 
he costs far too much money and offers very, very little in return. I don't. I think he's a listen. He he runs round quite a lot. I can't fault the lads in Dever. Um, Who bought him? I just don't think he's a very good footballer. Or well, he's got lots and lots of rough edges. He's yeah. got Who some. Who bought him then? I don't know. And again, I go back to why we bought him. We clearly bought him because. The terms were favourable for us. Yeah, I heard you saying that before, and again, I think that is a bit of a, a bit of a unsupported, damning indictment. No, I, I don't think it is because, well, if you had two, de- if you had two deals for two players, yeah, and one of them is better than the other one, yeah, but one of them is you don't have to pay anything up front. Well, I, yeah, okay. then I, you're you're yeah. going to pay the one that you don't have to pay. No, you're not. Well, we are, because we have. We've no, done it not. with him and we've done it with Dwight McNeil. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's your opinion, right? Okay. <laughs> but when you use the phrase, the deal is, we bought the deal and the player is secondary. That's yeah. the implication. That right? is, that's, yeah. Right? And I think that is damning. And if that was true, sack Thelwell right now. Okay. Right? Sack him right now. Because if you're saying, simplistically, I've got X mm. to spend, but it has to be in this deal structure, Anyone available? We can do. Yeah, we're trying to get rid of this guy called George. I oh, will have him then, because in that world, he can't possibly be in any real business mm. in a situation where you're thinking we want to play with these talents and these skills and these experiences, and they cost fifty mil. Yeah, and we've got twenty five mil to spend. We well, can't mm. have him then. You can have this guy though, mm. but he doesn't fit what we want. Yeah, but he, you can afford him. Yeah. Oh, we'll have him then. Yeah, if that's what they've done. If they've actually prioritised just having bodies, mm. then that's so incredibly damning, it's not true, mm. right? Um, the reason I asked who bought Beto, clearly it doesn't really matter, but because the club bought him, right, mm. is he's a man who plays in a two. Yeah. And we've got a manager who's never going to play more than one. Mm. So is he rough around the edges? Yes. Can he be a handful? Yes. Mm. Has he got a good first touch? No. <laughs> Does he know where the goal is? Yes. If you create big chances, will he likely take them? Yes. Can he play off someone? Who knows? Because mm. he get seconds. It's like bringing you know a Chimiti on with two minutes to go. At the end of the season, he's had ten appearances, but he's played twenty-two minutes. Yeah, you know yeah. what's the point, right? Mm. So. Um, I'm sorry, but you can talk to all the bloody independent commissions you like about strategies for recruitment, but we don't see it. Mm. We don't see yeah, the outcome. Yeah. Who yeah. are the players we bought to develop? Is that Chimiti? Well, he's not developing. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And Better wasn't a development player. No. So why did you spend all that money on him? Mm. Right? Dwight McNeil wasn't a development player. You know, clearly you're not going to develop a, a loan player. So Dan Juma's is just money you're going to burn. Yeah. Right. And you don't play him. Yeah. And then he gets injured. When you perhaps you need him, yeah. and then when he comes back, you don't play him. You know, it's, yeah. it's you've got to have a, a normal challenger environment, and I don't think that happens either in Premier League football clubs or in our football club in particular. Mm. You know, if the assistants can't challenge the manager, what are they there for? Just yeah. to be a thingy McNeil, just saying yes, boss, no boss, three bags, full boss. You want two sugars in your coffee, boss? Gaffer, sorry, oh, it, sorry, gaffer. You yeah, have to gaffer. call him gaffer. I, and, and the director of football can't challenge you, or whatever, whatever, whatever. It's the mad. thing is. You're absolutely right. And of course, Sean Dyche didn't buy, say, Dwight McNeil, although he probably would have. It's not a thing. It's not like a personal thing, of course. No, it's, it's not. not. What it is, is it's looking at... Because these are all good footballers. It's, you're looking at footballers and going, what did he add to our team? Yeah. Dwight McNeil's got no pace. True. And he's a wide man. So he's not, he doesn't, he's not adding loads here. Beto is a player that we don't even play in the style that he wants to play, mm. which is down the channels, down the side, so he can yeah. run behind. He wants to he run behind. one-on-ones. Yeah, he wants to run behind the centre-backs. Yeah. He doesn't want to be winning balls in the air, and it's this this way, this Frankenstein squ- squad. Yeah, I've heard that phrase. You've used that a lot. Who, who come up with... I know it's a phrase, but who started it in here? Was it you, Jack, or whatever? I don't know. Me. Okay. Right. But the point is, it's a Frankenstein squad not based on different managers. It's a Frankenstein squad based on basically finances of, well, we need this player and we've got no money, so let's go and get this player, rather than actually looking what we need. We don't have any pace, so go and get them with pace. So, so sorry, right, okay, this is fun now, right? Instead of that boring stuff, talking about six million <laughs> feet, right? Because, no, I'm with you, yeah. what you just said. I'm not, yeah. not going to diss what you just said, but in a world where you're tight on finances, 
and, and there'll be people out there watching this who say, oh, it's easy to say on a blue sofa, right? But you've got to, if, you, if, you, if you're going to call something a recruitment strategy, yeah. right, then part of the strategy has to be what's the objective mm. and how can we best achieve the objective? And that's the balance of, you know, types of players, skills of players, and all yeah. that good stuff, and how much money you, you're prepared to invest or are, yeah. are capable of investing and so on and so forth, right? And, and if you look at the Premier League and you think, right, okay, say, you, say it was, um, this was MLS, breakout franchise. Mm. Nothing exists, yeah. but you're going to join the Premier League next season or two seasons out. Yeah. What would you do? You'd sit down and say, what kind of players are successful? Mm. How big do goalkeepers need to be? Yeah. How fast do these types of... Do, 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 do. And then you said, there's your FM24 or FIFA or whatever it's yeah. called these days, dream team but competency-based, and you've just got to put names in, yeah, right? Yeah. And then compare that to Everton, you'd yeah. be a million miles away. Yeah. But We've it, continually acquired players with no pace whatsoever, right? We, now, we, now, if they've got an excess of talent, you don't need pace, because quality shows. But you can't have more than one or two of no. these guys. Well, what we've acquired, know? John, is players that other teams don't want, or other teams well, that have... Well, every player you acquire, they don't want. Being relegated. otherwise, you wouldn't have them. Even if you're paying £100 million pound for a player, the team who sold him didn't want him because they'd rather have the hundred million pounds. Right? Well, that's not strictly true. John. It is. That's not. Because they could say no. The, 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 yeah, yes, I don't you think, can. I don't think I'm breaking can. it down into very objective binary decisions, right? Do we can't want? Can't say no if they don't want to sign a contract. <laughs> that's different, right? But do we want this? Oh, hang on. Do we want this player or hundred million pounds? Mm. I'll have the hundred million, thank you. Because every single player should be the same, shouldn't it? Mm. So if someone offers more financially than you think they're worth, yeah, yeah. take it. Yeah. Now that's when I do my bullshit around, you know, plan the dive, dive yeah. the plan type crap. You plan that out, haven't mm. you? And that's what strategy is. Yeah. It's not just something you say to a PSR commission, right? Mm. And there's no evidence for me anyway that Kevin, if he has one, has been allowed to execute on the strategy. Because if you've concluded you need pace, we would have pace. It might be raw, yeah. it might be youngsters, yeah. but we'd have pace. But we'd have pace. But we haven't done that. We haven't got any. So there you go. Yeah, and they did, and destroyed us. Right, let's have a little look at the stats from last night. Oh, uh, yeah. Here we go. Just the two shots on target for us. Um, big chances. They had six big chances, and they, they scored six goals. We had one big chance, 41% possession for us as well. I suggest they missed the... A number of those big chances. Yeah, they probably did. Probably because yeah, because the one the lob and the XG was yeah. like half what lob and the goalkeeper's not a big chance. Yeah, is yeah. It? their XG was half the number of goals yeah. they scored. So you know, oh, they definitely could have scored more goals. And yeah, Jordan yeah. Pickford has, yeah. has yeah. actually had to make a few saves. So yeah. um, there it is. Terrible. Crap. It's, yeah, rubbish. We move on to Sunday yeah. now, and there better be a reaction. Who was Chelsea playing the weekend? Anyone know? Who? Man City in the semi final. Oh, of course they are. Next league MMM, probably. No they'll lose it, mate. <laughs> and they'll concede two goals. Okay. To they probably will. They haven't conceded. They haven't kept a clean sheet since, since December. And then. They had to concede a, what, had a clean sheet last night. Everton, yeah, <laughs> that's what I mean. And then Everton rocking. Pochettino so, will be saying, told you that was good. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Right, we're going to continue this over on Toffee TV yeah. Premiere, taking your questions. Oh. We're, we're live right now. We are literally live. And you could All be, this has been live. You could be watching this. You could be watching this. I even. thought you were going to bleep the swearing out. I can't bleep the swearing out. I didn't know it was live. Of course it's live. You told me. Uh, toffee, to, we, toffee to, for the cost of a coffee, for like a, one coffee for a month. you get Two for coffee. You get, I mean, I never think... mind a beer. You wouldn't need to get ha a, half a pint for what we charge for a month. Well, you can in Costello's and yeah. Stocks and Eat. Okay. That's the, qu that's, that's, and also you get, you get discounts on your merchandise. Uh, all the shows have no adverts or none of the podcasts any have adverts. Come and, come and, come and, we don't say this enough, right? We're not it's good. It's a giveaway, you know. We're not good at self-promotion. Yeah. But you know what? Toffee TV Premier allows this thing to work all the time. Otherwise, we don't have to get real jobs and we couldn't be your therapy session. Is the, is the discount on merchandise still obscenely high? Yeah, it is. He says the business guy. We need to change that. <laughs> no, it well, is. But right now, it's, it's extremely high. Go and sort. Go and check it out. Have you ever thought about buying a hoodie? Just subscribe. Just subscribe, yeah. And save about 10 Practically times. just get a hoodie. 10 times your <laughs> subscription. There, there you go. So, Toffee TV Premier, just, just wait a little minute. Everybody else, see you later. Thank you.